You know, every time you check an email, see a name pop up on your screen, or get a notification, you're looking at text. But have you ever stopped to think about how software actually deals with all those words? Well, in this explainer, we're going to pull back the curtain on exactly that. So let's start with the big question, right? How do computers, these machines that really only think in numbers, manage to store and show us something so human, like text? I mean, how do they know the difference between the number five and the letter five? The answer is a really simple but incredibly powerful concept called a string. Honestly, the best way to think about it is like a special container, one that's designed to hold any kind of text you can imagine, a single letter, a whole name, even an entire book. It's the absolute foundation for working with text in pretty much all programming. Okay, so we get the idea of what a string is, but how do we, you know, actually make one? How do we put our text inside that container? Let's get our hands dirty and look at how it works in the code. Let's break this down, because it's actually way simpler than it looks. First, we say what type of container we want, in this case, string. Then, we give that container a label, like name or city. Finally, we use the equal sign to put our text inside it. And just like that, the word John is now tucked away inside our name variable. Now, there are a couple of rules here you absolutely can't forget. First, and this is the big one, your text always has to be wrapped in double quotes. That's how you signal to the computer, hey, this is text. Second, and this is a sneak peek for later, a string isn't just plain text, it's what we call an object. That just means it comes with some cool built-in abilities we can use. Storing a name is cool and all, but it's not very useful if it's just stuck inside the program where no one can see it. The real fun begins when we make that text actually show up on the screen. Let's see how we can get our program to talk back to us. This here shows you just how direct it is. That command, system.out.println, is basically you telling the computer, hey, whatever I put in these parentheses, just print it to the screen. So we give it our name variable, and bam, John shows up in the output. It's that simple. All right, printing one piece of text is a great start. But what if we want to build bigger, more interesting sentences? What if we want to combine different pieces of text together? This is where things start to get really dynamic. So this is where the plus sign gets a totally new job. When you use it with strings, it doesn't do math. It acts like glue. You can see it right here. We take the first bit of text, hello, we use the plus sign to stick it to our name variable, and the result is a brand new seamless string, hello John. Okay, so gluing text to other text, that makes perfect sense, but that leads to a really interesting question. What happens if you try to use that same plus operator to join a string with something totally different, say, a number? So check this out. We've got a number, the integer 25, stored in a variable called age. Then we try to join the text age colon with that number. Now you might think that would cause some kind of error, right? But look at the output. It works perfectly, printing out age colon 25. And this reveals a really awesome convenient rule. The programming language is smart enough to help us out. The moment it sees you trying to join a string with a number, it just automatically converts that number into text for you behind the scenes. It makes building useful messages so, so much easier. We've moved pretty fast here, from what a string is, to how to create it, show it, and even combine it with other things. So to make sure all this really sticks, let's just do a quick recap of the absolute must-know takeaways from all this. So here they are, the three golden rules. Number one, text always, always goes in double quotes. Number two, the plus operator is your best friend for joining strings together. And number three, don't sweat mixing text and numbers. The system is smart enough to handle it for you. If you can remember these three things, you've totally got the fundamentals down. And that's really the heart of it. That's how text works in the world of programming. It's a simple set of rules that lets you do almost anything, from creating a simple welcome message to displaying user data or building complex reports. So I'll just leave you with this question. Now that you can manage text, what are you going to build with it?